Hello and welcome to podcast 11.6. In this podcast, we will look at global temperature patterns. In this first image, we're looking at what would be our summer in the Northern Hemisphere. You probably noticed a lot of colors on this map, but I'd like to start off by talking about what are known as isotherms. An isotherm is a line that separates areas of different temperatures. So as an example, let's look at the United States right around where the Great Lakes are. In between these two lines indicated on the screen, we would see temperatures between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit on average. Now there's one very important thing I need to point out. Take a look at how squiggly the isotherms are in the Northern Hemisphere, and then compare them to what you see in the Southern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, the isotherms are relatively straight compared to what we see in the Northern Hemisphere. Now why do those isotherms tend to be straighter in the Southern Hemisphere than in the Northern Hemisphere? Well, let's split this globe in half. If we start by looking at the top half, Notice that most of the land mass occurs in the northern hemisphere. And keep in mind that land can heat and cool very rapidly, whereas the oceans with their very high heat capacities tend to maintain relatively consistent temperatures throughout the year. Now let's shift our focus to the southern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, there's much less land than there is in the northern hemisphere. And along those same lines, there's a lot more water in the southern hemisphere than in the northern hemisphere. Large bodies of water serve as the great stabilizers for climates, but they also do a very good job of straightening isobars. And just as a brief look at what happens during our winter months in the Northern Hemisphere, we see a lot more blue in the Northern part of this map than we do in the Southern part of this map. I wanna focus on the United States for just a moment and notice how close the isobars are spaced during our winter months, especially in the Northern part of the United States and up over the Great Lakes. When you see closely spaced isobars, that is indicating a very steep temperature gradient. So let's suppose you want to travel from central Illinois up to Winnipeg. Well, along that trip, you would see a huge drop in temperature over a relatively short distance. And of course, when I say relatively short distance, I'm talking about a short distance on a global scale. But anyway, in this image, we see that most of the hottest temperatures have shifted either to the equator or slightly below the equator. Okay. Now let's put both maps on the screen at the same time and talk about our take home points for this vodcast. When we compare and contrast the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, it's very important that you understand that the Southern Hemisphere has relatively straight isotherms. And that's due to the fact that the majority of the surface in the Southern Hemisphere is ocean. Knowing that there's very unequal heating between land and water, and knowing that most of the land mass on our planet occurs in the Northern Hemisphere, the isotherms will tend to get a little bit squiggly in that Northern Hemisphere. It's also important to note that isotherms can help us map out ocean currents. And when we take a look at the annual temperature range, the temperature ranges will be small at or near the equator. But as you move your way up to the higher latitudes, say the mid latitudes, for instance, you'll start to see greater and greater temperature ranges between the winter months and the summer months in these locations. And as I've tried to hammer home over and over and over again, the greatest temperature ranges will occur over continental locations because of land's ability to heat up rapidly and cool down rapidly. Due to the very high heat capacity of water, the oceans are very good at maintaining their temperatures. Okay, that concludes this video podcast. In our final vodcast of this chapter, we will turn our attention to climate change.